Every successful person in this world, believe it or not, has jumped. I'm a college dropout. I was homeless, lived in a car for three years. I've lost every single thing I had, family included. I've been written off so many times. But today, the person that you sitting in front of you is a process. I want to talk to you for a moment about the process. Because see, one way to get a person to really follow you is to be the example of what you get of what you're trying to get them to follow. You know, my daddy used to tell me all the time, he said, son, best thing you can do for poor people is not be one of them, because you can't help the cause. Your brain is divided into two halves, positive and negative, good and evil. Each half of your brain has millions of factory workers on each side. You got a million factory workers on the positive side, you got a million factory workers on the negative side. At the forefront of each one of those factories in your brain is a foreman. You got foreman positive and you got foreman negative. You are in charge. You're the boss of the factory. So let me show you how this works. You got a remote control. You go to your house tonight and you press that power button and you press it. When you point it at the TV, what do you expect to happen? You expect TV to come on. You press the power button, you expect the TV to come on. If you want to watch HBO, and HBO is channel 300, and you press 300, and then you press select, what do you expect to come on that TV? And what comes on that TV? So now, since your brain is in two halves, let me show you how this works. You wake up in the morning and you say, man, I don't feel myself today. I got up on the wrong side of the bed. I'm not a morning person. Foreman negative. Her hears that. He steps to the front. He said, what did you say? You say, I said I woke up on the wrong side of the bed day. I'm not myself. I'm not a morning person. He says, you got it right away. He said, hey, the boss just woke up and said he's not a morning person. He's having a bad day today and he ain't feeling himself. Let's get to work. The million factory workers start producing thoughts to justify what you just said. So now guess what? Man, I hate my alarm clock went off this morning. I got to get out here in this traffic. I'm going to drive down here today. I don't even like these people on my job. I can't stand this car I'm finna get in this morning. Sure wish I had a new car, but I'm driving this ragged ass car. And on and on and on. And your day starts tumbling into what you ordered at the top of the day. You can wake up in the morning and you say, you know what? Today is gonna to be a great day today. I expect something really good to happen for me today. Man, thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. He said, what did you say? You said, I said, I'm having a great day today. I expect something good to happen today. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up. Foreman positive turns around and goes, all right, let me have your attention. Steve's having a great day today. He's expecting some wonderful things to happen. And man, let's get it going. And they start manufacturing thoughts. Same brain. Man, I can't wait to go to work today. It may not be the job I want, but at least I got a job. I appreciate the fact that I don't have a car, but at least I can walk to the train. Man, this is going to be great today. That's how your mind works 24-7. It never turns off. You have got to change the way you think. It is the whole determining factor of where you go in life. We are all where we are today because we thought ourselves to this position. If you don't like the position, think yourself out of it. Change your attitude, you change your altitude. I'm going to tell you something that every successful person has to do, including you. Believe it or not, every successful person in this world has jumped. I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. You eventually, you are going to have to jump. You cannot just exist in this life. You have got to try to live. If you are waking up thinking that it's got to be more to your life than it is, man, believe that it is. Believe in your heart of hearts that it is. But to get to that life, you're going to have to jump. You see people in life, when you're standing on the cliff of life and you see people soaring by, 
When you see people soaring, going to exotic places, you hear about them doing wonderful things. Maybe you look up the street and your neighbor just gets a car every year, every two years. You know, how is he doing that? Have you ever thought, maybe this person right here has identified their gift and is living in their gift? Because your Bible says, this your Bible says your gift will make room for you. Your gift, not your education. You go get an education, that's nice. But if you don't use your gift, that education only gonna take you so far. I know a lot of people got degrees, man. Dang, they ain't even using them. It's your gift. But the only way for you to soar is you got to jump. You got to take that gift that's packed away on your back. You got to jump off that cliff and pull that cord. That gift opens up and provides the soar. If you don't ever use it, you're going to just go to work. And if you're getting up going to work on a job every day that you hate going to, that ain't living, man. You just existed. At one point in time, you ought to see what living's like. But the only way to see what living like, you got to jump. And here the problem. Let me just be real with you. When you first jump, let me tell you something. Your parachute will not open right away. I, I'm sorry. I, I wish I could tell you it did, but it don't. When you jump, it's not going to open right away. You're going to hit them rocks. You're going to get some skin tore off on them cliffs. You're going to get all your clothes tore off. You're going to get some cuts on you. You're going to be bleeding pretty bad. But eventually, eventually, the parachute has to open. That is a promise of God. Here's another thing. You can play it safe and deal without the cuts and the tears. And you can stand on that cliff of life forever safe. But if you don't jump, I got another promise I can make. Your parachute will never open. You'll never know. You'll never know what God really has for you. I was speaking at a school once. I was talking to the students. The principal was mortified with my message because I was telling the truth. I was telling the kids, your education is, poor, is important, but your education is not the most important thing in your life. I'm sorry, it's not. Your dream is the most important thing in this world. The principal came up on the stage while I was speaking. Don't ever say that to my school again. Well, I'm just telling you, dog. You can save your kids a lot of pain if you ever talk to them about their dreams. You got to talk to young people about their dreams. If you talk to kids about their dreams, your dreams can spur you to get the education. But if you never find out what a child is dreaming about, you can't hold their attention. It's the dream, man. You got to dream about something so big that it dwarfs all your fears. The way you overcome fear is with your dream. You got to make your dream so big that nothing matters except that dream. You're willing to do everything that's necessary. I was listening to Will Smith the other day. Will Smith said, the best things in life is on the other side of fear. It's on the other side of fear. But fear freezes people, man. The fear of failure freezes people. Suppose I don't do it. Well, you might, you might not make it. But I got news for you. If you don't do it, you damn sure ain't gonna make it.